Hi friends, thank you for tuning in to the Concussion Coach Podcast. I am Bethany Lewis, the Concussion Coach. I'm a neurological occupational therapist and certified life coach, and I specialize in guiding people through their concussion recovery journey. I am passionate about helping people understand their injury, speed up their recovery, and reclaim control over their life post-concussion. The purpose of this podcast is to help increase awareness of concussions and the impact they can have on a person's life, and to bring hope to people who have suffered a concussion and those who love them. I firmly believe that sharing stories and knowledge about concussions will bring important light and understanding to this misunderstood and often invisible injury. The information in this podcast is meant to bring that awareness and hope and is not meant as medical advice. The opinions shared are those of the interviewees and my own. If you are suffering with lingering concussion symptoms, I have created a concussion coaching program specifically for you. I will be your mentor to guide you through your recovery journey, offering help with understanding and managing your symptoms, setting achievable goals, and learning how to manage your own thoughts and nervous system in order to get control over your life again. If this program sounds like something that would help you or someone you love, sign up for a free consultation. In the consultation, you'll get valuable information and resources and gain hope for your future. Sign up for your free consultation at the link in the show notes or at my website, www.theconcussioncoach.com. Hi, friends. Welcome back to the Concussion Coach Podcast. My guest today is Jesse Cooper. I met Jesse through Cognitive FX, and I'm excited to get to know her a little bit better through our conversation today. Jesse has learned firsthand how post concussion syndrome can completely change someone's life. She's passionate about being an empathetic support to those also living through their healing journeys. She graduated with her bachelor's degree in psychology from Utah Valley University and is currently working at Cognitive FX as a patient care coordinator. She loves spending time with her family and friends, being out in nature and laughing through the ups and downs of life with her husband. So thank you so much for being here with us today, Jesse. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yes. Yay. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your injury? How long ago did it happen? What happened? Okay. My injury happened about two years ago in August of 2021. I had just gotten engaged to my husband-to-be at the time and was doing full-time school, working, internships, and then also planning a wedding on top of things and got really sick. I got walking pneumonia and was in bed for a good two weeks. Decided to take a steam shower one night at two in the morning because I was coughing so bad I couldn't breathe. Uh, So I thought it would open up my lungs and it did, but unfortunately I also passed out in the shower. Oh no. Yeah. I got myself up. I'm not sure how long I was out, but I I was like, oh my gosh, I'm making such a mess. Water's getting everywhere. So I got myself up, turned off the water, stepped out to make my way to my bedroom and fell again on the bathroom tile floor. And then just waited there. Couldn't move until my dad came and found me. So, so grateful that he heard a little Oh my gosh. Yeah. In the middle of the night, it woke him up. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. Were you... The second time, did you pass out or did you just slip on the floor because it was wet or what happened there? I was just weak. I just, my body just collapsed. I couldn't handle what I was asking it to do. <laughs> so. oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So how so did you, what ended up happening after that? Did you go to the hospital or something or just kind of try to re- lay down? After that, I just felt like I needed food. So I had him go grab me just some turkey lunch meat from the fridge and I ate some rolls of that then felt strong enough to get to my bed and just slept. I didn't have a bruise or anything on the back of my head. So I just figured, well, I probably just passed out. I should be fine. Uh, Still really sick with the walking pneumonia. So I just stayed in bed for another week and a half and then got up, started cleaning the bathroom because I felt great. And then two days after that, I couldn't see. My vision and vestibular symptoms were crazy. Couldn't walk or do anything, look at my phone without feeling just like, I was going to pass out again or just really dizzy, nauseous, all those things. Oh my goodness. Wow. So did you hit your head when you passed out or when you fell the second time or both? Both. Ah, dang it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and and you said you felt good. Like after you, your body was healing from the pneumonia, then you, you were up and doing things. You felt good. And then it was a, a day or two after that, that you started not being able to see and do things. Yep. After I started asking my body to do the things that normally could, mm. my brain said, nope. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. So did you know at that time, so you didn't know that you had a concussion right. when, when you first had the, the incidents falling down. When you had the second, like when you started having all these symptoms, did you recognize that it was concussion related or did you just think it was from the pneumonia or what's going through your mind at that point? Not much was going through my mind. I was just really scared and didn't understand what was happening to me, but my mom thought that it might be a concussion. So I had, we have this family friend who, um, 
is a physical therapist who specializes in concussions. So we went to him um, and he tried a couple of things, but it just wasn't working out. And so he referred us to family doctor who also specialized in sports concussions. That wasn't my story, right? <laughs> I wasn't playing sports at the time. And luckily that doctor knew of cognitive effects and referred me to that. Man. Okay. So how much did you know about concussions prior to this experience? Not much. I knew that the football players at my high school and they got a concussion, they were out for two weeks, maybe missed a game or two, but then we're right back at it. So that's what I expected. If it was a concussion, just I'll be fine in two weeks. Yeah. Yep. That's what I, I hear that all the time. They're like, oh yeah, it's just a concussion. <laughs> like we don't, yeah. doesn't, people don't know that it can have long lasting effects. So what were the main symptoms? You, you mentioned a few, but what else were you dealing with when you one yeah. So with vision and vestibular, it's the proprioception. You can't really tell where your body's at in space, right? So being in a car was unbearable, could not handle that, let alone driving, right? So I was just housebound and then couldn't really walk on my own very well, couldn't do chores around the house to feel helpful <laughs> or anything. I couldn't read, couldn't do all these things, headache, head pressure. I felt like my head was going to explode if I did try to do push and do things. Mm. And a lot of fatigue, lots and lots of fatigue. Had it, did it impact any other areas like your, any personality stuff or emotional oh. stuff? Oh yeah. I had struggled with bouts of depression and anxiety beforehand, but this time was like, unlike any of those before. And then just emotional regulation, a lot more irritable with little sounds and stuff around the house it would just send me right over the edge. <laughs> Yep. Did you have any of the light sensitivity? Oh, yes. Yep. <laughs> how about how about your sleep? Terrible. It was so bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is like classic stuff here. Okay. Oh, I'm just going to keep going here. What about how was your memory? Did you did that get impacted at all? Yep. I just forgot about that part too. See, memory. <laughs> But yeah, I think I was trying to help clean the house at one point and my husband had some keys set out on the counter and I guess I threw them away. I didn't realize I did, but he was asking me, where are the keys? And I said, what keys? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> oh man. Little things like that. And then of course, friendships and family stuff. It's hard to remember just life events and birthdays and mm -hmm. want to be that good friend and, and sister and family member. But sometimes it just, your brain forgets. <laughs> Yes. Well, and I, a lot of times too, the executive functioning skills are just not there. So even you could use a calendar, but that is really hard too. <laughs> like it, right? it's yeah. Very challenging. Decision-making, was that challenging for you? Yeah. I was so grateful for my mom in this whole process. She was so great to help me get all the appointments scheduled, help me figure out rides to get to those appointments. Anyway. Oh, blessed mothers. <laughs> so yeah. Nice. yeah. Grateful that you had some good support. And we'll talk more about that in a minute too. So what, what about, and I guess I keep thinking this might be a better question to ask later, but I'm going to ask it now anyway. <laughs> um, what about the, your experience of a concussion surprised you? I think that I didn't fully understand it, but also that everyone in my life didn't fully understand it. So feeling truly isolated in a way that I'd never experienced before. And then just not being able to function at all, like I had been able to function before in my life. I was used to being like, just running a million miles a minute, doing all the things. And then I couldn't even take a shower without having to be done for the rest of the day. So, oh man, how long did you have the symptoms before you found, like before you started going to get help, seeing the PT, seeing the family doc, and then eventually it's the effects? Thankfully for my mom, it wasn't very long before she realized something's wrong and we need to find help. So it was just a couple of weeks um, to get into the PT. And then it was, it ended up being six months waiting to get into cognitive effects, but their sister company, Neural Effects, had an opening uh, to meet with them just once a week. So I started seeing them three months after the injury and worked with them each week, twice a week until my treatment at cognitive. Mm. How was that experience for you? How was neural ethics? It was great. I loved that they had lots of different specialists in the same office. And then I only had to gear myself up for one hour of treatment twice a week. Right. But the driving there and back was torturous. And then just figuring out rides was stressful on top of that. So I was really grateful when my time at CFX came to just have it all done in one go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not have to worry about extra things like that. Yes. Oh, I'm sure. And when was the wedding? Like, how did all of this play into your timing for 
I mean, prepping for a wedding is stressful and overwhelming for anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that played out. So Dallin proposed in July, mid-July. I got my injury mid-August and the wedding was mid-September. So I, yeah, a week before the wedding, I was in the thralls of it and decided I need to give him a free out if this is just not fair to him. I have no clue what's going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to be the same person at any point after this. And so I sat him down and I was crying. Basically, I'm going to cry with him. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But he was so sweet and just helped me understand where he was at and that he wanted to do this whole process with me. And we were in it together. And yeah, he's he's an angel. I'm so grateful for his support and his love. That's amazing. That's amazing. So did did you have a wedding in September while you were still it, so yeah. affected by this? Oh my goodness gracious. My bridal shower, I wore big old glasses and a baseball cap and just looked like I was high <laughs> <laughs> meeting all the new family and stuff. Yep. And then my wedding, I was not fully there, but I just stood and smiled <laughs> oh my God. and then just rested a lot in between things. But Wow. Oh my goodness. That's intense. Well, this is, it will be very memorable, right? You will oh, yes. <laughs> never forget that. Man. Okay. So when you did get to go to CFX, well, tell me what, yeah, let, hear, let's hear about your experience at Cognitive. What was that like for you? It was awesome. I was intimidated by the eight hour day program. I didn't think I could do it because I could barely handle a one hour program with their sister company. But I was so impressed with just how in tune all of the therapists were with where I was at. And I just really felt like Dr. Tom at NeuroFX and everyone at CFX helped me understand that I wasn't crazy, that what I was going through was normal for someone experiencing a brain injury and that there was hope and help to be had and that they were going to guide me through each step of the way. So I wasn't in it alone anymore. So that is a beautiful thing. And was it, how was the experience for you? Was it helpful? Like, do you feel? Oh yeah. I say CFX was my launch pad to recovery. Helped me understand how to activate my brain and how to recover and how to prepare in the right ways, how to ask my brain to do things in the right amount of time and effort, um, rather than just trying to push through, get it all done kind of mentality. Yes. Oh yes. Um, so I love I love that that's your experience that you were able that it was so hope filling for you and that you were reassured that you were not crazy. That's yeah. part of why I want to be doing this podcast is to let people know if they're experiencing this, you're not crazy. You've had a concussion <laughs> and there's and there is hope and healing to be had. So tell me a little bit about the for you and everybody's experience is different, but coming out of cognitive FX, you, you said it was like your launch pad to healing. What did you, what were your biggest takeaways from it? And, and how long, like, did you, did it take for you to start feeling like you were getting some of yourself back? Yeah. I feel like I finally understood somewhat the steps to listening to my body and giving it what it needed. You don't learn that a lot in life growing up, right? Doing sports, you just do what the coach tells you to do, even if you're dying or <laughs> And school, it's same thing. You're just plowing through, getting it all done. That is such a good point. We really don't spend a lot of time teaching kids how to listen to their bodies. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. So that was huge for me. And then, sorry, can you ask the second part of the question again? <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um, how long, like, what was, how much, how long did it take for you to start feeling like you were getting yourself back? Oh yeah. Several months because my visual processes were not up to par. They were not communicating with my brain. Great. I had 2020 vision, but my eyes could not take in the stimuli and compute it very well. So I had to do vision therapy for six months after my time at CFX. Um, and that helped a lot. That was a game changer for sure. Oh, um, and I felt like I was 90% back to being myself, which is funny because I say that now still I'm 90% back. <laughs> so I think as you're going through this healing journey, you are always understanding that there's more healing to be had and there's more things that you can do to help your brain feel better. So I think that's, that's really cool. That's a cool yeah. thing. Yeah, it is. And it is a, a continuing journey, right? <laughs> it's and yeah. that's we're that's kind of accurate for just life in general too right we're always learning there's always things to ways to improve and things to grow into so that's that's awesome yeah so what things well actually okay what things were most helpful in discovering and loving yourself post concussion mm, i um 
actually stuck out some help from a chiropractor just to help anyway with my spine and and neck stuff and he recommended that i go visit a functional nutritionist um, her name is helen beakley and she also does cogno movement sessions and foot zoning and stuff and i still work with her today and it's been an amazing thing just to help me understand my body even further give it the nutrients it needs and just clearing out some things with my brainstem um, as well so she's an awesome resource also doing some pilates uh nicole west she's been great feeling like i'm in my body and in control of it again and it can be strong and i can trust it uh, to take care of me again that's oh, that, really cool that's awesome thank you i appreciate yeah. these other perspectives that's awesome um so what what things did people say or do while you were in the throes of this that was the most helpful or that was particularly helpful for you? I learned that our brains will fixate on the one thing that is wrong, even if there are 10 things that are better. <laughs> and so having my husband or family members or friends point out when they notice small improvements was huge. And then also just being really understanding if I had to cancel last minute on plans that we had made because I had symptoms come up or just being flexible and understanding. And I don't know if I would have been as flexible and understanding as they were to me because I you just don't understand fully what mild traumatic brain injury does to someone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mild in air quotes, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, did you were you able to communicate to them what was going on for you? Like you you said they were really understanding when you needed to cancel and things like that. How, how did you tell them? That was the hardest part because for me, being able to communicate my experience, I couldn't never find the words to accurately help people understand. But I think they knew who I was before and who I was now was not matching up. And so they knew something was off and that I just needed time to heal. So very grateful for the support group and just their loving kindness <laughs> and being understanding, even though they didn't fully understand. Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. So uh, along these lines, is there any advice that you would give to people who are loving and supporting someone who's had a concussion? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think just understanding your frustration with their abilities right now are minuscule to their own frustration with their abilities that they have right now and just helping them see the small wins that you do notice. And it's okay to push them. Um, actually, my husband and I came up with a funny joke because I got so frustrated with having to try and explain when I was really just over symptomatic and couldn't handle small things anymore. But I didn't want to lash out at him all the time when that was happening. Right. So I thought of the um, Snickers commercial. Have you ever seen that where the guy's like just crazy out of his mind? And then his friend's like, hey, you need a Snickers. And he takes a bite and then he's like back to being human again. <laughs> So anytime that I was starting to feel really symptomatic, I just would tell him, I think I need a Snickers bar. <laughs> and that would be his cue to know, like, I'm just going to give her some time, let her de-stim. And then I also gave him permission to say, do you need a Snickers bar right now? Kind of call me out a little bit. And of course, I would be a little bit frustrated when he'd do that at first, but then take a step back and realize like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that so much. That's such a good idea. And I think so important for people who are, yeah, the ones who are close to have some kind of cue system, like, hey, I am not doing okay. I need some time. And I love that it's like a, a light hearted kind of joking way to do it. It makes it makes it lighter, but still communicates really important information. <laughs> yeah, because so. you're not the only one going through it when you have this injury. Your whole support system is going through it with you in their own way. Right. Yes, totally, totally. So tell me a little bit about what you you work at Cognitive FX right now. How did that come about? And what is that like for you being on this side of it? Uh, during my treatment, some of the therapists would ask what I was interested in and what I was studying. And I was studying psychology at the time. And they were like, oh, well, would you ever be interested in doing something in this field? And I was like, actually, yeah, that would be so cool. So they said, well, apply when you're feeling ready and up to it. Um, and we'll see if we can get you on the team. And so I did and I got the job miraculously, <laughs> but I really love it. It's been such a huge blessing. I think before the injury, I was just trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. Right. I knew psychology, something in that field. Mm -hmm. uh, but after trying lots of different things, I'd last about a year and then get a little bit bored. <laughs> <laughs> but in this bill, it's so fascinating because every injury is different and so personalized. And so it's so cool to just learn how to be adaptable and help everyone where they're at and with what they need in that moment. And I also learn a lot from the patients uh, working with them. 
it's cool to hear their questions and then I'll give them an answer and then I'll I'll be like oh I actually needed to hear that answer thank you for asking that question <laughs> I love that. that is so great oh so good and I bet I'm sure you are so empathetic and good to yeah you've you've been through it so you can relate and I'm sure that's really helpful for, for yeah them. Well. And there were employees there when I went through the treatment who did the same for me. So I thought that was really cool. And I would have loved to be able to turn around and help other people too. So it's kind of a dream come true, even though yeah. that's so cheesy. <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful thing. And I think also another testament to how really hard things can really like bring direction or like be a huge blessing in, in disguise sometimes, but, but yeah, just, yeah it's put you on this path that's seems to be really fulfilling and I know you do amazing work there I know the patients love you so that's that's well, so great tell us a little bit about some of the things that were most helpful as far as like how to help how you found to help re like de-stim your system like what what was most helpful for your system to bring it down when it was feeling out of whack good question there's so many things and they would change and fluctuate throughout throughout the whole experience so at first just being alone was kind of necessary, even though it was lonely, right? And that was hard, but I just needed to be in a quiet, dark space, <laughs> uh, be away from stimulation. But then um, just wearing some glasses that the vision therapist gave me was helpful when I was out in public or at family events and stuff, family dinners, wearing those helped my visual symptoms to be more toned down. Listening to binaural beat brainwaves was really awesome, soothing. And I just wear my headphones all the time listening to those. <laughs> You're going through your day or like, would you yeah. take a break and do it? Both. Mm. Both. Uh, when I started doing school again, I would, I was just doing one class online just to dip my toes back in the water. I would listen to my brainwaves while I was doing the schoolwork and that helped me be able to get through just my last semester of college. <laughs> awesome. But yeah, that and then we're doing some cool research with primitive reflexes right now at cognitive FX and using them as a de-stem tool instead of what they're generally used for. So they're almost like relaxing yoga poses and focusing on your breath um, and your diaphragm breathing, breathing through your nose. And those were also really helpful to helping me just kind of bring my body and mind back together <laughs> and calming everything down. Yes. Oh, that's, that's awesome. So if you could go back in time, what advice would you give to yourself in the early days of your injury? Oh, I would remind myself that it's okay to experience everything that's happening, but not to let it scare you. Um, I think when I would have these high peaks of symptoms, I would get really, really scared and anxious about it and freak out that this is what my life was going to be. Right. And that I had no control over that. But through all the treatment and all the amazing people that have been placed in my life, I've seen their experience and learned firsthand that I do have control. I do have the power to help my brain calm back down. And I have the tools to know how to do that now. So no matter what I do, whether that's try to go on a cruise or <laughs> if I want to go into a grad program or start a family or whatever it is, even though that's scary to think about, I'm not sure how my brain or body will handle it. I know how I can help it de-stim um, in the moment. So oh, that's beautiful. That sounds like uh, that's just really comforting awareness to to know that you can. It's just very empowering, right? <laughs> like uh, you know, you'll be able to handle the things as they come up because you know what to do and to let yourself have the experience that you need to have in the moment. That's really yeah. powerful. Thank you for sharing that. What advice would you give to others who are dealing with similar injuries? Yeah, either early on or later on. How would you? What would? What would you recommend? I recommend listening to what your body is telling you you need. And if you don't know what that is, finding someone who can help you, reaching out for help, talking to other people who have been through similar experiences, anything to help you realize you're not in it alone is a game changer for sure. Yeah. Any particular like specific advice on how to listen to your body? Like what, what was it that you learned that helped you to be able to do that? I think instead of having the mindset of, I should be able to do this, so I'm going to force myself to do it rather being like, okay, I'm noticing this is really hard for my brain right now. I'm starting to get a headache or I'm starting to feel dizzy. Just like kind of stepping back, taking note of all of the symptoms that you're experiencing, not giving them a judgment or saying that they're bad, but just realizing like, oh, this is happening right now. What did I do before this to trigger this? And what can I do to help it come down? That's so good. Yes. I, it reminds me of a conversation I had with somebody at Cognitive FX just yesterday, a patient, he mm -hmm. asked me, 
It's like, so if I'm, if there are circumstances that come up that I don't really have control over, because he was saying, I kind of know now what to do if I, you know, if I'm getting overstimulated, I know how to bring it down. But if, if things are just, things come up that I don't have control over, should I just, should I give in to my body symptoms and things or, and take rest or should I push through? <laughs> and I was like, well, let's, let's talk about how we're framing this <laughs> because if you're thinking of it as giving in, that just sounds really negative and like you're, you're not, it, it's not a positive thing, but if you're, if you're considering it as, okay, my, I'm aware that my body is telling me I need to do certain things and I'm going to honor my body and take care of myself so that I can then show up in these situations the way that I would like to better that like it changes the way that you think about it and and gives you permission to to take care of yourself and listen to your body and I, I think what you said too that awareness or like taking a step back and being like oh this is what's happening for me because when we're in that moment we tend to just when we want to push through it's like we have tunnel vision we're not paying attention we're trying to ignore all of the other things and just do this thing and then we pay for it later <laughs> but so yes i love what you said that awareness okay this is what's happening for me okay and there may be some situations where you need to push through and and you make yourself do it but i think the vast majority of the time it's much a much better option to take the rest break earlier on so that then you have more capacity going forward totally yeah yeah definitely agree that's very well said I love that. Thanks. Well, yeah, it just it was like perfect with what what I was having that conversation with yesterday about patient. So, so you said you're ninety percent back. Tell me, tell me actually before I ask it, I was going to ask what are you still dealing with and things like that. Yeah. But I'm I'm curious, how does that feel? Because I know so many times people are like, I want, I just want to be back to who I was before. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a lot of it's kind of an identity. It's a big, hugely an identity thing. How have you dealt with? that and what is it like to be 90 percent back what good are your question. experience good question i think you definitely go through a grieving process because you do truly lose yourself in this i did anyway i was used to being the one that showed up for everybody right did all the things and couldn't do that anymore even though i really wanted to um, my body just wouldn't allow it so definitely just allowing myself to grieve that that took a lot of time. It was really hard. Uh, but then I met Kaylee Blair. She was my vision therapist at the time. I also did some uh, coaching visits with her. She's got her own brain injury coaching business and you have partnered with her for CFX, which I think is awesome. Is awesome. Um, yeah. But she just explained to me her experience was that she's Kaylee 2.0 now and that I could be Jesse 2.0 as well. And I, I learned that the life I was leading though i found fulfillment in it i it wasn't healthy or sustainable what i was asking my body to do constantly and so the life that i have now even though it seems like on a piece of paper maybe i'm doing less with air quotes <laughs> i yeah. feel like i actually am so much more fulfilled i'm able to be present with people a lot more than i was even before when i was fully functional air quotes <laughs> i just feel so much more kind of at peace with the life that I have now. And I am in the driver's seat. I am choosing intentionally what I want to do, not just kind of being thrown around with whatever expectations are out there that I'm trying to reach or chase. Right. Yes. Oh, that's so beautiful and so powerful. Thank you so much for sharing that. So do you feel like when you say you're 90% back, what is, what does that mean? Like symptoms wise or what? Yeah, I think I say it in like a symptoms terminology. So I do still have to take breaks uh, when I'm working on a computer for a long period of time. I do still get symptoms when I'm driving in heavy traffic for long periods of time and have to take time to de-stim. After long days of work, my husband knows that I just need to come lay down for 20 minutes before I can help with dinner. <laughs> Anyway, these might be normal things that everybody seems to experience, right? But after a brain injury, I think I just get super hyper aware of how my body's responding. And I know when I need to give it breaks and stuff. So, yeah. So it's just really interesting to hear. I don't know when you, when people say like I'm 90% back, I, it's good to know that that means about symptoms specifically, because the way that you were describing like your life post concussion is actually like more fulfilling, more beautiful, like more intentional. Like it's like 110% back. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a good thing that it's not exactly the same. That's, that's yeah. really, really beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And, and I think again, even though there's still some, maybe some lingering physical things that you're, you're dealing with, uh, that maybe require more rest or whatever, that, that awareness that you have makes it doable. It sounds like. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Very, very cool. 
So you probably touched a little bit about some of these things, but are there any other lessons that you've learned through this experience that you'd like to share? So we talked about like listening to your body and stuff and giving it what it needs. I think also being able to communicate your needs, even though I said before I wasn't able to do that very well, it really forced me to not just rely on other people to try and read my mind. I had to ask for my sweet husband to put in his AirPods and listen to his podcast instead of just trying to push through and deal with it playing while I was trying to fix dinner or anyway, just lots of little things where I had to advocate for myself and kind of stand up for myself, even though it can be uncomfortable at times and you don't want to ruffle anyone's feathers or offend anybody or, but you do have to just ask for what you need. That's mm -hmm. not even just a want, but like you have to stand up for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that has come up a few times, actually, as I've done these interviews, people have said that the self-advocacy is something that they didn't have before and that they, it forced them to learn and that it's been really good to learn that skill. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And do you, I'm curious how this is something that has come up in the coaching that Kaylee and I do together at Cognitive FX when we have, we sometimes will have a group get together and we'll kind of talk to people who are about to go home. And one of the things that people are concerned about is how to communicate to people about their injury and about what kind of what you're saying, what they need, like, how do you advocate for yourself? Or do you feel like it's necessary to tell people that you've had a brain injury? And if so, how do you do it? Like, what, what's that like for you? That's a great question. That's something that I think changes depending on the person that you're communicating with. I, at first, was really self-conscious of how I was behaving, um, just not feeling like myself was confident or not being able to communicate or express myself. So I would almost say it in an apologetic way, like, or in an excuse kind of way, like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like I did have a concussion, so I'm not as whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But now I've realized that the most important people in my life understand what they need to understand and that everybody else, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> So I don't feel the need to explain myself all the time to people anymore. And the people that I want to have close relationships with, um, I do take the time to try and help them understand. And I'm not perfect at it. I don't think there's one perfect way to do it. I think just being honest with them and letting them know, like, you know, I really want to be here for you and support you in this. Here's what I'm experiencing right now. What can we figure out together so that you can get what you need from this relationship, but I can also listen to my body and honor what it's needing right now. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> I think I just yeah. says case by case. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense that it's, it's kind of based on the person and the, the relationship. And, and I like that. I like how you said you try to work together with the people who it matters the most, right? You work together to figure out how you can still listen to your body. And it just sounds like a balance that needs to be found and it probably changes every day. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. And understanding that people probably won't fully understand being okay with that. And the people that want to understand and want to try, those are the ones that you want to stick around and yeah. invest your time in. The ones that don't, it can be hard, but people come in your life for a reason at certain times. So, yeah, so true. And I, I really like to remind people that you're not responsible for how other people deal with your injury. <laughs> that's, that's, that. that. and it's okay for it to be on them. And you just, you have enough to deal with on your own, <laughs> to deal with your own injury. So yeah. you don't take on anybody else's concerns about it. So yeah, I think it's important. I love that. That's awesome. Thanks. Um, so how have you maintained hope throughout this recovery journey? Mm, I think the biggest, most foundational is my belief in and relationship with my savior, Jesus Christ. I'm just understanding that he went through everything so that no matter what we go through, we're not alone. And then also just the amazing people that have been placed in my life to help me through this journey that my family, um, the amazing people that I've met at Cognitive FX and, and other places too, that have gone through similar journeys, hearing their story and just finding community. And that has been so hope filling, just knowing that there are things you can do and there are people who understand what you're going through and you're not alone. Yes. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. That's so beautiful. And I, I love that the connection to the higher power and connection to other people. I, that is so, so important. And I hope anybody who listens to this can feel some of that, that community, like, Hey, you're not alone in this and also find, find your people who can, can understand and help through it because it's yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. 
not alone in this. Okay, well, thank you. This has been such a great conversation. I'm so grateful for all that you've shared. And I, you've, yeah, you have a beautiful countenance and aura around you. <laughs> I was like oh. talking to Kaylee the other day. She was like, Jesse is so good. And she's going to be like, she's on this, like she seems to be on a coaching type journey. Like she's really good with people and really helpful. And I was like, yeah, I can, she's got a good vibe. I can feel that from her. <laughs> so, thank you for sharing your goodness today and your experience. And I, I think it will be helpful for people. And is there anything else that you want people to know about concussions or your experience thus far? I think just understanding it's okay to not fully understand it. And that every single injury is so unique and different. And so nobody is going to fully understand it, uh, whether you're the one going through it or you're the supporter. So anyway, just try and be hopeful and know that you're not alone and that there are things that you can do to heal. Yes. So important. Awesome. Well, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate you being on here today and I'm excited to get this story out so people can hear it. <laughs> so uh, thank you. Thank, well, thank you. you, Bethany. I am so impressed with everything that you're doing. I think it's really cool. Thanks. I hope it's helpful for people. So um, helpful for me. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. I'm so glad you listened to today. I hope you've gained some helpful insights and inspiration regarding dealing with and recovering from concussions. My goal is to create more awareness and education about concussions and the fact that there is so much that can be done to improve life after someone has had one. Help me spread the message by liking, commenting, rating, and subscribing to this podcast and share it with others who would benefit from hearing it. There are more resources available on my website. And again, if you or someone you love would benefit from concussion coaching, sign up for a free consultation using the link in the show notes or at my website, www.theconcussioncoach.com. Thank you. See you next time and take good care of that amazing brain of yours.